Hey guys, this is Jacob from American Implement in Ulysses, Kansas, and today we're actually at Marvin Miley's farm shop here. Marvin Miley has quite a few antique tractors, and these tractors we're looking at over here today are John Deere 4020s. The 4020 was one of John Deere's most popular models ever built. And since I don't have an extensive knowledge of the John Deere 4020, I called, the, I called up my friend Keith Woods to help me out with this walk around. Keith has had over 55 years experience working for a John Deere dealership here in Ulysses, Kansas. So he knows everything about these tractors and he knows everything about almost any tractor. John Deere built over 180,000 4020s. What made this tractor so popular for the customers, Keith? Okay, to start with, the forerunner to the 4020 was the 4010, come out in 1960. Uh, the 4020 has a lot of updates over the 4010, uh, little things that needed to be done. And let's just start on the front of the tractor here. Okay. Uh, number one, got the fuel tank out front where you can easily fuel the tractor. You don't have to get in the middle of the tractor to uh, to fill the tractor up with fuel. All of the older tractors had a fuel tank back in the kind of the middle. It was hard to get to. The other thing that made this tractor really, really a good tractor, easy to set your row crop, axle spacings, and it's a very strong axle is durable, stood up well. Then the next thing that really put these tractors out and going was the hydrostatic steering. There's no mechanical link going from the steering wheel to the front of this tractor. It's all hydraulic lines, a hydraulic motor, and a steering valve. And that made super steering, steering that would stay with you through thick or thin as far as pressure, whatever. The other thing that right here on the front end. It's got a rotary piston pump that maintains this constant 2,200 pounds of pressure and it, the pistons stayed out whenever there was no demand and whenever there was a demand established then the pistons dropped in and started pumping the oil. Uh, and that was a way above everybody else's close. This is a closed center is what they call it. Everybody else had an open center, so they was constantly pumping and bypassing. And uh, so that, that's one of the, the things that just start here on the front of this tractor uh, that we really had on top of it. So some of the things I'm seeing here then is they made a point to have some of the daily maintenance or you know just basically filling up fuel things like that they made that accessible. They made it easy for the farmer. The next thing that you pointed out a big thing is it was versatile. So like you mentioned, you could row crop with it or you could do quite a few other things. And then the third thing that you mentioned was it was well ahead of its time with the engine as well as with quite a bit of the hydraulics. Yes. Let's go on. Uh, of course, when the 4010 came out, we had strictly two cylinders. We'd run to the top end of what we could do with a two cylinder tractor. And that's when Deere decided to come with the six-cylinder and four-cylinder versions of this tractor. So that was a, a big step for us. And then a very modern engine and everything. And th this happens to be a, a 69 year model tractor. So it's got a lot of features over some of the others we'll talk about back here as we go along. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the back of this tractor or maybe the operator station. Yeah, let's, let's at the time, whenever the extractors come out, they put a suspension on the seat and they designed a seat instead of just an old flat platform um, seat, they put a backrest around on it to where it was a whole lot more comfortable. In fact, at the time, uh, we called it a seat designed by an orthopedic doctor. And so it was, you know, quite a bit ahead of its time. That's a strong selling point. Yes, uh, adjustable for weight, uh, adjustable for height easily and as you adjusted it for your 
getting up closer, it also adjusted down. So a smaller person, uh, like, uh, you know, and, and we were, had women driving them even back then. So we needed that, uh, that feature. Once again, very versatile. very versatile. Comfortable for the operator and versatile. Right. Then this tractor here, uh, to this side. which this tractor, I'm not sure whether I sold it new or not. Uh, it may have been sold out, out of our Hugerton store. Uh, it belonged to the Young Greens, which is down kind of between Ulysses and Hugerton. Uh, it happens to be a sinker range, which has got an eight speed uh, transmission and it has four ranges and then within a range like one three uh, two five four seven and six eight when you're in those ranges you can clutch it and shift it as it was synchronized within those uh, gears so it's made it a really nice uh, versatile transmission as far as the operator station on this particular tractor in 69, which is what this tractor is, we had our console hydraulics. Before that, the hydraulic controls were over to the left side of the instrument panel. And this is really a, a very nice feature. The three-point and the hydraulic controls, or remote controls, were all controlled right over here. So it was, you know, it was just easier to operate over here with your your left arm instead of having to reach up there with or, or with your right arm. I don't know which arm I've got. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, there again, like we was talking, a very modern engine, We've got pencil injectors, uh, advanced hydraulic or uh, injection system on it. So, okay, uh, a feature that uh, this tractor doesn't have it up where I can show it to you. A feature that John Deere had actually back when we had the two-cylinder was our rack and pinion axle adjustment. So you could loosen up your wedges and it had a roller on it and you could roll that wheel in and out instead of having to struggle, push, pull and whatever. So that's a feature that John Deere has patented for uh, years and years. Now some of the other tractor companies now are using that, but uh, it's a feature we had for years that was our exclusive and a good one. Okay, come back here to the back end. This tractor has dual remote cylinders controls on it. And uh, an interesting thing, and a lot of people now don't know it, but these hooks on the back, that's where you hooked your three by eight or four by eight remote cylinder that you switched over and put on the disc that you were picking up or the uh, chisel plow. Uh, so we used to change cylinders, uh, take it off of one implement and put it over on another implement. And uh, now we've got, everything's got their own cylinder and that's a really nice feature. Then a feature that John Deere had on these tractors and they come out on the 4010s and on the 4020s is we used a cone tip, a specially designed cone tip, to where we could plug in under pressure. You could leave your implement up and hook it up. And before that, well, you had to figure out some way of either jacking up and taking the pressure off the cylinder or some method to, to get that pressure relieved. And that's why John Deere back in 1960 went to their own special design hydraulic tip and so we could hook up under pressure. Okay, another nice feature that we have now on the 4020 uh, is we got dual speed PTOs. You can see the stationary shaft that's sticking out there off pointing to the left. That's a 1021 spline PTO shaft. This particular unit here has got a 540 in it and it's got hooked up to this drill and uh, they're easily changed, a pair of pliers, take the snap ring out, pull the shaft out, switch them over. You've always got your shaft, they're clean. All you gotta do is just switch them over and they're designed to where they go into the right set of gears. So when you got the right spline, you got the right PTO speed. So that's a nice feature. 
Well, today we don't just have one 4020, like we mentioned earlier, we have three. So let's take a look at these other tractors and see some of the differences from this restored 4020 and some of these other ones that are wearing their work clothes, as you had mentioned earlier, Keith. Yep, in the work clothes. Uh, this tractor here, uh, I sold this tractor new to a gentleman that lives out west of town. Uh, it's a standard tractor. The front axle on it is solid, not adjustable. So the customer that bought it, he didn't have row crop. He didn't need that feature and it was less money to go with this standard axle. Uh, one of the things that's different. <clears throat> then they had crown fenders instead of the row crop fenders like we have on that tractor and the tractor back here. This tractor in a lot of ways is, is quite unique in that it is a standard. It's got the crown fenders on it. It does have a three-point three hitch, which a lot of tractors that were standard didn't even have a three-point hitch on them. But this customer wanted a three-point to where he could use some other things like a rotary mower and whatever on it. And then it is also a power shift. And this power shift is eight-speed transmission. You can shift it from first clear through eighth and back, and it has an inching clutch on it to where you could stop it with the clutch, but you can also just shift it up and down, never having to use the clutch. And that was something that we come out with in 1964. This tractor is a 64. Uh, one of the ways I can quickly tell it is it's got large injectors in here for 65 and newer, had pencil injectors like the one up front just a small feature. This tractor here it has had a, a modification done to it and it's got a 12 volt electrical system on it. From 1960 whenever they come out with the 4010s up until 68 all of the 4010s and 20s had a 24 volt charging and starting system. Uh, the idea of that was that we got a better spinning to get a better starting uh, on the tractor. Uh, in 69, uh, they come out with some starters that had the ability to crank well without having to be 24 volt. Right. Okay. So the 24 volt was, uh, it had, you, you had to know how to operate it, is kind of what it amounts to to make sure you didn't have a battery run down or issues like that. Uh, so this tractor here, it has a clearly a third party loader on it. Was this something that you could actually get through John Deere at the time? Or did you see most people go with a, a third party option when they added a loader to their tractor? Uh, we could get a John Deere loader at the time. Uh, like this particular loader, it is a really heavy duty loader. Uh, <clears throat> that's one thing I might say, maybe John Deere didn't have as heavy duty loader as what they needed. It was a good utility loader but there were a lot of manufacturers. Uh, in fact, I sold a lot of the old GB Great Bend loaders and whatever on, and uh, for example, the GB had a 900 loader that went almost 15 foot in the air and things like that. But that's why they went with that particular uh, loader is it is a little heavier duty. Should we move on to the next one or is there anything else you see on this one? I want to mention here, if you'll notice all three of these tractors Marvin has put on the rollover safety with the canopy. <clears throat> they didn't come out with that feature until uh, it was, I think, around 68 or 69. But as you can see, it says John Deere roll guard. And this roll guard is strong enough. However, you have this tractor set up, weighted, it could stand a rollover and would never crush or bend. It's a very, very strong structure. Did John Deere make this rollover guard um, specifically to to um, add to older tractors that didn't come with them? Yes, that is correct. They they come out with that, and uh, in fact, they had a special price on them. They they were selling them at virtually net price uh, at the time to get our farmer growers to install them on their tractors for safety. And when they did that, they come out with seat belts on them and whatever. Oh, and this tractor here has got a uh, aftermarket uh, seat on it, uh, which is more like our, you know, the 
This, in fact, I think this seat come out of a tractor with a, a roll guard uh, body on it, uh, a John Deere cab body. Any guesses on what model that John Deere tractor was that this seat came out of? Oh, uh, well, it, it could have even been, let me see, about 76 or 7 is when they came with this seat in the 4430s. Uh, the first uh, seats that they had was seat like what is on this front tractor, except they put it was brown whenever they put it in the cab. <laughs> you still see that. Uh, tractors these days, the new ones, um, the ones with or the ones that don't have a cab tend to have the yellow seat and the ones that do have a cab tend to have either a cloth or a leather tan or brown seat. Uh-huh. That's just one of the ways that they, they set them up, whatever, so. Okay. And then this tractor, another one that's in its work clothes, uh, it is a uh, 68 40 20. Uh, so it's got the hydraulic controls over there on the, the instrument panel instead of back here. And then, of course, this has got uh, added hydraulics so they wouldn't have to tie up their rear hydraulics to run this dozer. And, and this tractor here is, is a uh, sinker range, which is the eight-speed manual shift tractor. Uh, of course, both of these tractors have been converted to a 12-volt electrical system because it is so much easier to operate. What was the most popular model from these three? Which one would you see the most of in our area? The ones that would be the most, uh, that I sold the most of over the years, would be equipped more like the one that is up front uh, with a row crop front axle, the uh, row crop fenders, and three point, of course, dual hydraulics. And whenever uh, we was able to get into having triple remotes on it, we started selling some triple remotes on the 4020s. Uh, so but th that tractor would have been the most popular tractor. Now it is a little unique and it's got the dish, steel dish wheels, which most all of the tractors I sold had wheels like this one here, the cast iron. Usually we had a big weight on the inside to get the traction that we needed to pull our heavy implements like a heavy duty offset disc and whatever. Well, we, we used these cast wheels. Uh, so that would be a feature that would have been on a tractor like that up there on the front. And then back in the day, we sold a lot of aftermarket cabs that we put on like an Ansel cab or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> This tractor is a little unique and it's got a single hydraulic, which that was standard equipment. And then the two hydraulics on the rear, hydraulic outlets, were for uh, more versatility. What, to you, uh, made the 4020 really special? The fact that it was ahead of time against our competitors, so it got off to a really good start it was a popular tractor, uh, and the, probably the most special thing about it is the number of them that were sold. Uh, the serial numbers on the last tractors was like 250 some thousand uh, was the serial number, which they did take off and go consecutively from 1,000 on the 4010s and went on up Every once in a while, they jump to an even number within a year, so they maybe skip some. So that's why there's, of the 4020s, only 180,000 when the serial numbers went up to around 250,000. Uh, but uh, like I say, it was just a, a tractor that was ahead of its time in a lot of ways. And then uh, uh, our competitors started playing catch up and, uh, you know, and then we come out with a 4430 with a sound guard body and that put us in a whole new class. Very good. You mentioned the other day that um, you've 
or I know that you're, you've been in the business for over 55 years after retiring, maybe, um, what is it, three, four years ago? Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. You mentioned that you started your sales job right about the time that these were first, or they were still in production. Um, was the first tractor you sold new a 4020? Yes, a 65 4020. I started selling in, in 1965, uh, and the very first one I sold was a 4020 power shift, a 1965 year model. And, and uh, like I say, I don't know where the tractor's at today. I, I would like to know, but uh, <laughs> anyhow, it, that's a long time ago, and it'd be hard to catch up with it. And the customer I sold it to, he was a very faithful customer. In fact, he would usually trade about every two years. He'd have uh, seven, eight hundred to maybe a thousand hours on that tractor. He traded off for a brand new one, and I usually had customers that was sitting around waiting for him to trade. So he did a really good job of keeping that tractor nice. Yes, he he, he took excellent care of it. It was almost as good as brand new when he traded it in. Kind of like that front one right there. Yeah, kind of looked like that front one. <laughs> Very good. Thank you.